We'll be right back. You're not alone. You are not alone. As long as the United States stands and we will stand forever, we'll not let you ever be alone. I can't speak publicly about all the details, but let me assure you, for me, as the American president, there's no higher priority than the release and safe return of all these hostages. I've long said, if Israel didn't exist, we'd have to invent it. And while it may not feel that way today, Israel must again be a safe place for the Jewish people. And I promise you, we're going to do everything in our power to make sure that it will be. Well, we're opening up with some news that is a concern to the markets, which is possibly more war in the Middle East. Some of the comments that the president made were surprising for me personally. Now, I'm going to make some comments about politics, but I really don't want my comment section to blow up with political strife. Uh, it was interesting to me to hear our president say that his number one priority as president was to make sure that there was a ceasefire in Israel and in Palestine. Now, now, it's, it's one thing if he were to come out and say, I support this, right, and I support their right to defend themselves and to do what they're doing. It's entirely another thing for him to come out and say, I'm going to take up this cause as a representative of the American people to ensure that their cause is equally weighted to the cause of the American uh, person, the, the average citizen. Now, I'm not going to get into the politics of what I personally support or my opinions on it. This is a conversation about the economy and the man in charge of the economy is taking a very strong position of what appears to be an escalation of force in the Middle East. And it was interesting to me that there was not more news headlines commenting about this is the reason why the stock market pulled back a little bit today and some stocks uh, quickly capitulated on this news. It seemed as if all of the reference was to the coming jobs report, which I think is significant. But I'm gonna tell you from my personal perspective, what scared the market was escalation of global conflict and that's the reason why things sold off and I think it was a far bigger news story than the jobs report which is important and I will be watching it but I had to lead off with that and I know that I'm gonna stir up some folks guys uh, it's less of a concern the the political nature of it and more of a concern to me in this show about the impact on the economy and the fact is that there are dynamics where war does make money and is profitable, but I think all of us want to see peace. And I think a lot of people are feeling right now that we wanna use our resources here in the United States to take care of the citizens that we have right now and their current crisis. And what is that crisis? Because people are in a crisis. There is a economic war here in the United States right now on high housing costs, gas costs, and food costs. There's an inflation war that needs to be tamed. And I'm gonna tell you the only way to tame it is to stop spending. And we know that when the war calls are made, the printing, press for cash is fired up and goes into full force because after we make an act of war or an act of military aggression, the very first thing that has to be done is to go to Congress and say, okay, well, we need this X amount of money to fund it. So if that happens, then we're going to see inflation become even a bigger concern. Here we are potentially yet again, now facing being heavily financially involved in two global global conflicts based on the president's speech today. And that's going to produce, if we continue down those roads and we haven't turned back from that path yet, it's going to produce higher inflation because we're going to have to spend some money to act on those those deeply rooted ideas expressed in his uh, strong speech today. I didn't include a lot of it today, but I can tell you that uh, he was very, very, very sympathetic and empathetic to the plight of, of the Israeli people who have suffered terrorism uh, to a point that seemed uh, incredible. I mean, I'm not going to say much more, but if you go back and listen to that speech, uh, his sympathy was, was profound. And I would have loved to have heard him come out today and give a speech towards the American citizen uh, and the impact of, of housing costs 
rental costs that have gone through the roof and makes people feel like they're gonna be out on the street and uh, homeless because they can't afford the ever increasing price of housing. And then, you know, even if they decide to take residency in their car, they can barely afford to move it around with the cost of gas. And I can tell you personally, I don't notice much cost because to be honest with you, I've got means. And um, I don't really notice the cost of things. But the one area where I tend to notice is the cost of food because I tend to take people out to eat a lot. And uh, that's the one bill that I, ha I happen to see regularly. And I'm, inc I'm always amazed when I'm signing that check. I'm like, wow, these bills have gotten higher and higher over the years. If I took two or three people out to eat, in my mind, it used to cost X. Now it's cost 2X, 3X what that price was. So inflation is out of control. That leads me into the broader topic. I probably smacked the bee's nest on this intro today, but it leads me into the broader topic about the fact that I don't see the Fed cutting. If the Fed cut, that would confuse me because it wouldn't make sense for him to cut because the fact is the economy is strong and if we go back into a mode in which we're printing more money and we're going into any form of a mobilization and any form of a military assistance to Israel, the fact is we would be printing a ton of money and that would further stimulate the economy, further aggravating inflation because that's how inflation is created through excessive government spending. Let's just take a pause right there. This is the Stocks with Josh show. Thank you for joining me today. It's actually a stock and crypto show. And I'm going to be talking about some of my past calls. I'm going to be talking about some important companies, both stocks and crypto. We're going to do a recap of some previous calls that I made. And we're talking about some important companies and they're, where they're headed right now. I'm be highlighting Tesla as an example and try to get through as many of them as I can. Thank you for the likes. Thank you for just saying hi in the comment and hit the subscribe button to keep getting relevant, timely, important technicals and commentary on this market. I'm not into the politics, guys, so don't bother coming back for that because you'll rarely hear me hear me talk about it unless it directly affects the economy. So the other day I made some calls, some crypto calls, and it was interesting to me, this is just a side comment about my video yesterday. I want you guys to know that I only made the video about meme coins I'm investing in in April, not because I felt that this was gonna get a ton of views and be popular, because actually it got less views than my normal videos. Uh, perhaps meaning that most of the people that come to this channel are looking for uh, in-depth, insightful commentary on the market and less on meme coins. But I'm telling you that those uh, calls were legit technical calls. I made those calls because those are meme coins I'm taking a speculative position in and hoping to make a nice return. I'm hoping to make tens of thousands of dollars investing in those three coins in the month of April. We'll have to see how they turn out. But the how they were performing is what caused me to bring them to your guys' attention. It's always about making money and helping you make money. Let's just do a quick recap. Since that call on Cock Inu, it went up 14% since the call. Plenty of room to put your stop loss in and realize some gains. Brett went up, B-R-E-T-T, -T, went up 38% from the time that I called it earlier this week. It went up and it's now back down to about 20%, but it's up 20% up from the point where I called it. Boom, B-O-M-E, Book of Memes. I said that this would pull back to 0 0.0145 and then move up, and that's exactly what we got today. When I was looking at the chart earlier, it was up 11%, and I think all three of these have room to go higher, and so that's why they're on my watch list. But let's talk about Tesla for a minute because I gave some technicals to you guys on this page last week, and really they've been proving to work pretty well. I also gave them into the Discord this morning, and we've had ongoing conversation throughout the day about how to read these charts correctly. And here's what I want you guys to understand. I outlined support and resistance, and I indicated in my chart that I gave in the Discord that resistance was at 172. Well, midday, it just seemed to skyrocket right past resistance with a solid green candle indicating that it could be on its way to 180. Now, I have enough years experience to have cautioned everybody. I saw right away that there were folks in the Discord saying, oh man, I'm in puts. I made a big mistake. I better just sell at a big loss. And another guy said, man, the minute I sell these puts, it's gonna reverse and the puts will be profitable and my calls will be at a loss. And I could see right away that people were not really understanding how to make these technicals work for them. And so I gave this additional post on Tesla. And here's what I said. I said, guys, 
you got to remember when I give these support levels and these resistance levels, such as the 172, you have to watch and see what it does on the daily time frame. Does it actually close above 172? Or the second scenario that you need to keep an eye out for, even if it did close above 172, where does it open the following day? Because that's the full rule of thumb to see if a price level is being respected or disrespected. And in the case of 172 and those who are putting on the puts, that was actually a reasonable decision because even though it did seem to be pushing up and wanting to go to 180, it failed on the bad news in the market today and it fell all the way back and closed beneath 172. And here's what I want you guys to be aware of. Whether it happened today or tomorrow, if it ended up being beneath 172, that's the signal that it's going lower, not higher. If it had closed above 172, that's an area of support and resistance. These are support and resistance that I've given you guys in the past. Then in that point, it's the signal that it could go on to 180. And so I saw one gentleman say in the comment section to a couple of folks who had been in puts and were distressed about the fact that Tesla was showing strength. You know, he came out and said, I'm making a ton of money following Joshua's technicals. And I just want to explain to you, it's one thing for me to give you these technicals. It's entirely another for you to understand how to play them. And the way that I'm going to share with you today, a little bit of the, I don't call it a secret, but I think it's unknown to some people, is once you define your support and resistance, and you've got to get good at that. I think I'm relatively good at that. Once you define your support and resistance, once the price action gets to your resistance, most of the time it will break through. But if you're using the daily time frame as the basis for your investment or your speculation, if you're using the daily time frame, you have to see what happens by the end of the day. If it ends up, the price closes beneath your resistance, it means that that was resistance. It's confirmed resistance. And so what are you doing? You're striking trend lines and you're watching candles. And when the two agree, now you've got a position that you can take a, now you've got a point in which you can take a position. This is the number one reason. I'm getting ready to drop a gem on you guys. So draw in and pay attention. The reason I just gave you for how I trade these trend lines and these candles is the number one reason why stocks tend to move in the last half hour of the day because it's smart investors, technical investors, guessing at where the price is going to close and taking a position for the following day. So if you find yourself trying to figure it out midday, that's, that's the most risky, right? That's the most risky position you can take. I normally only trade the momentum in the morning and I take positions in the, in the late evening before close or late afternoon. Those are the two places which you, a seasoned investor will largely take their positions. If you're in the middle of the day when things are chopping it up or even moving with momentum one way or the other, you may not have the correct picture to take a position and hold it. You can only do momentum trades midday, which means that it's not the type of trade you're planning to hold the following day. You're either taking it up or taking it down. I hope this explanation was helpful to you guys. I'm gonna cover one more stock here in just a minute, but I wanted to share the newest offer from the Moo Moo Investment app. Let me show it to you guys. All right, if you click on the link in the top pinned comment, I've left a link there for the Moomoo Investment app and I wanted to share with you guys exactly what their current offer is. So if you put in your total cash deposit, they're gonna give you a rebate of 1.5%. But the part that is more interesting, but I don't think that this screen really um, communicates it as well as, or as, as desirable as the offer seems to be, is that you get seven free fractional shares with your deposit. If your deposit is over $100, they're gonna give you $5 of each of the Magnificent Seven stock. Well, at least with uh, Moo Moo, they're still considering Tesla part of the winning Magnificent Seven. This isn't Jim Cramer's take on things that they should be omitted and called the Super Six. And the good news there is that Moo Moo is now offering fractional shares. This has been a kind of a disadvantage. I've actually considered Moomoo to have the very best trading tools available on a phone out of any platform that I've personally messed with. But the drawback was they didn't allow fractional shares. It's called the set it and forget it. Slow accumulation of your favorite stock. And if your favorite stock was Apple and you wanted to buy $5 a day or $10 a day, you couldn't do it on their platform. But as of right now, 
you can do that. So check out the Moomoo Investment app for the better trade tools and to start getting fractional shares and they're gonna kick you off if you put 100 bucks in there, they're gonna kick you off with $5 of each of the Magnificent Seven. So click on the link, it's available in the US, Australia and Canada and the offer is for the United States. All right, the next stock I want to get into is one that I've talked about on this channel. Now, sometimes when I talk about a stock but I don't come back and visit it for a week, maybe, maybe even two, it's because I don't either have clear direction on the stock and I'm watching and tracking it for myself to figure out what's happening or nothing's really happening. But in the case of the stock I'm gonna share with you guys today, we're gonna to be talking about Walgreens, Boots, WBA. In the case of Walgreens, I think the stock has become interesting enough in the charts that I felt it's time to revisit this one because there's just a couple things that I saw that I want you guys to see. So real quick, if we take a big broad look at the Walgreens chart, it's ugly. And it's kind of surprising because this is an American staple. This is a household name. Everybody goes to Walgreens to pick stuff up, get medication, get tweezers, to get pop. I and mean, whatever it is they need, they go to Walgreens because it's one of these few stores in the United States that's open like 24-7, 365 days a year. It's been pretty reliable. Most people have enjoyed having their Walgreens on their corner block. And yet here we are, they have recently erased through this horrible price action, 26 years of shareholder value. So we're operating off of more than two decades of time travel back in the past. And that just tells you that Wall Street's been really concerned about what's going on with this company. And so you might ask Josh, what is going on with this company? It's cash related. The reason why the Magnificent Seven could take off the way that they did for the most part, not all of them did, but the reason why most of them could is been repeatedly stated that they had a very high cash balance. If any of them had been cash strapped, well, they would not have brought the S&P 500 up as high as they had. But the reason why Walgreens has been going down in this relatively bullish environment is because they don't have cash. Matter of fact, uh, they, they've got a new CEO though and they're making big changes. They understand that they've got a very limited amount of time to right the boat, to get Walgreens straightened out. And the new CEO has been selling assets and he's got other assets that he's looking to sell. And personally, what I think about that is that the new CEO is likely to sell some of these assets because he didn't build them. He's less tied to them. There's one thing that he knows the company needs, which is cash to reposition themselves in the marketplace. And you might ask, well, how are they repositioning themselves? They're trying to reposition themselves in healthcare. That's the direction that they're going because that's where the money's at. And so they need cash to transform their stores and to change their business model to be better positioned in the healthcare industry. Now here are some of the things that they're doing. They recently sold their shares of Sencora for almost a billion dollars, 992 million, and they're looking to sell their company Shields Health Solutions for 4 billion. That would be a nice influx. And they're also looking at spinning off Boots UK, that's their England version, for 8 billion. So I'm gonna tell you right now, between eight, four, and one billion, that would be enough money for Wall Street to, to get Wall Street's attention. Because you gotta remember, you either have to have increasing profits or a high cash balance, it's the only way Wall Street loves you. And I just wanna tell you guys, it's not the story, it's not the product, it doesn't matter how cool the idea is, Wall Street's always looking at those two factors. Do you got money to make money? Is your profit margin increasing? Now, if you don't have cash and your profit margin is decreasing, Wall Street's gonna push the price of your shares down. And I have been actually, since the day that I came onto YouTube, I've been trying to share that with you guys. I knew the minute people started to ask me to chart AMC, which, you know, bringing up AMC or NEO often frustrates some viewers, but I knew the minute I started to chart AMC and share the fundamentals with the larger community, that this stock was only ever going to go down because they don't have those two factors, increasing profit margin and, in, and a, a large pile of cash. And even the cash that they got through the meme stock craze, they didn't spend correctly, which was a confirmation to Wall Street that they should get their butts beat and probably go bankrupt. All right, so there's, there's your main clue. Walgreens is 
Walgreens has the ability to raise the cash that they need to reposition themselves. Now here's the main thing that I want to show you guys in the charts. I'm going to show you two things in the charts and this is a money making opportunity. I would not be talking about Walgreens if I didn't think there was a turnaround opportunity. However, I did take a position a bit early uh, and it has proven to go down. Now the way that I controlled the position that I took, the way that I followed my trade disciplines was to control my position size. I have 386 shares at an average price of $21 giving me a $1,000 loss. And what I'm watching for is to buy that exact amount at, where, at, at a lower price where we're at now, but I've got a target in mind, a specific target. I'm gonna be watching over the next couple days whether this $18.40 level holds, okay? So this is what I'm watching exactly. If it holds above $18.40, then over the course of the next couple weeks, then I will take a position around the $18 to $19 price. I'm gonna buy an equal number of the total shares that I have, okay? But if it doesn't hold, if $18.40 doesn't hold, then my new target becomes $16.92 and I will wait until it gets down to that level to double my position. Even with doing that, I won't have a full thousand shares. And so I want you guys to understand that because I'm getting in early, before we've got a confirmation of a reversal, the way that I am controlling risk without having a stop loss is I'm controlling risk through position size. I always attempt with every trade that I do or talk to you guys about, I always attempt to honor all of my disciplines, which I've shared on this page many times. So that's exactly what I'm doing with Walgreens. But let's talk a little bit about why I think that the stock might be moving towards a bullish turn. If we go back and we look at the big history of the stock, we've had these long moves down, which have been around a thousand days that have been followed by a really strong spike up, right? And then we've had another long win, long window of going down, followed by a really strong spike up. Well, we're at that thousand day mark. I simply believe strongly in the idea that price action loves to return home Where's home? It's at the center of the moving average. We've gotten too far away from the moving average on Walgreens, and I believe that it wants to turn around and go home. And for that to happen, it, the price has got to go up. Let me show you guys the idea in the charts. All right, we're looking at monthly candlesticks, which means each and every one of these candlesticks is a full month in the market, which means that 12 of these is a full year. And so here's what I want you to obviously see with me, and you guys can see this pretty easily. We've got a swing high here. We've got a swing high here and we have a swing high here. Now we're gonna look at the time frame that it took to get from this swing high down to this swing low. Now that was roughly 40% and it took roughly a thousand days, a thousand and sixty days, okay? Now let's do the next one. And this one went down 60% over 731 days and then recently we had a high in 2021 and we've been going down this entire time and we're at 1,090 days. And so now let's take a look at the type of reversals that the stock has gotten after going down in that time frame. We're gonna go up from this swing low in 2018. It went up 44%. And now we're gonna go up from the swing low in 2020 and we went up 70%. And it is my estimation that in this current low, at least 70% back to around $31. And that's essentially my premise. I'm kind of going off of time and moving averages, the fact that this is overbeat, but I'm also looking at the fundamentals, the new CEO, the opportunity to raise cash. And here is the game plan. I want to take my position before the CEO announces the sale of either Boots UK or these other assets before that's announced because after that's announced, I think it's gonna get a really strong big green candle. And uh, you know, let's see how it plays out. I make predictions on this channel all the time. This is another bold prediction. I am believing that they're overdue for a move, that the price action has swung down too far. I see fundamental reasons 
opportunities for the stock to bounce back after this oversold condition. They're literally just waiting on some positive news for the shorters to close. And if they get the cash, that's the positive news that they need. And all of this could be moving towards a big opportunity come Walgreens earnings, which are ahead of us. And so right now, as I gave you guys my game plan, it's not running quickly by. <laughs> it's I showed you the price levels I'm watching. I told you I was going to double my position, which is a small position. I've got under 400 shares, and even having 800 shares of this stock is a small position. But this is how I've been playing this stock for a long term. Now, I did a couple videos on Walgreens, and when I did them, I told everybody this is not a swing trade. It's a long trade, and it will take years to play out. And in doing that, I'm positioning this stock to be one that I would sell uh, covered calls on or covered puts. I like to get into that scenario where I'm going to do that for a long period of time on stocks that I believe will have a potential for a longer, higher move up. Right now, I don't like to buy heavy on companies that are already run up and could spend years coming down. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. That's uh, so that you're, if you got into it the last time I talked about it and it was between 20 to $21 and now we're down at $18 and you're sitting, you bought too much. One guy said in the Discord, he said, I bought a lot of this. I'm thinking of taking the loss. I'm not gonna advise you as to what you're doing, but here was the advice I gave in that show. I said, this is a long-term position that I'm moving towards taking a position in. You guys have got my entire game plan, my position size, my loss, and what I'm gonna do as this moves forward. And I think in the end, what I'd hate to see happen is that I come back reporting another amazing win on Walgreens, and some of you guys didn't really understand or follow the plan, and then later on you're like, uh, Josh, you were wrong about Walgreens. My intention, I don't know if I will be, but my intention is to double, 100% increase my money on this Walgreens play, and I'm taking my time with it, which is what I told you guys. So I want you to keep that all into consideration. If you had never gotten into Walgreens, I'm not telling you to load up, but let's see how my plan plays out and keep it on your watch list because if you see that giant green candle, that reversal candle based on good news, some of the news I shared with you guys today, I think that we're gonna go up 50, 60, 70%. Not in one day, but over the course of time, we will have found a good bottom. Like I said at the beginning of this portion, 26 years of price action has been erased in recent days. That is an extreme oversold condition. And what happens with extreme oversold conditions is they tend to balance themselves out. What swings low turns around and swings high. That's what I'm expecting. Hopefully this was insightful to you guys. I've shared a lot about my, my personal trading psychology today and, and uh, we got a little technical and we got into politics a little bit, which I hope doesn't offend you guys. I hope this was helpful. I just gotta uh, thank you again for hitting the like, hit that subscribe so you don't miss these videos. I believe that, that on these videos, we're making life-changing money on this page and I appreciate you guys joining me and participating in that. And I'm getting very close to getting over 100,000 subscribers and I know that that's exciting for me and I appreciate all those who've been with me from the beginning, been with me when I had no subscribers. We ramped up pretty quickly and I think that things will really pick up pace once we get over that milestone. As always, my friends, peace and blessings. Take care.